It's now seven o'clock and I'd like to call this meeting to order and welcome everyone. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Seeing and hearing none. The municipality of Central Elgin would like to acknowledge that we gather on the land of the McKee Purchase, the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Attawandran, and the Mississauga Nation. Would you read the first motion concerning the minutes, please? Madam Mayor, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Ferris, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks, that the minutes of the regular meeting of Council dated Tuesday, May the 24th, and the special meeting of Council dated Tuesday, June the 7th, 2022, be adopted. Any questions? If not, would you call the vote, please? Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. Okay, and now we move to delegations and we have our Port Stanley Waterfront Master Plan, the final report. So Michael, I assume you're the one presenting? Yes, correct. Go ahead, please. All right. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present to you this evening. Uh, my name is Mike Tucker. I'm a partner with Think Design and I was the project lead. And uh, before I get started on behalf of the project team, I just wanna say that uh, we really enjoyed this project. We enjoyed working with the community. And of course, as you know, you've got a great waterfront. So I wanted to, before I forget to thank you for the, uh, for the opportunity to work with the community on this. So tonight I have approximately 10 to 15 minute presentation. I'm gonna cover the purpose of the study, our approach, what we heard through community engagement, our recommendations, implementation strategy, and then I just have a one slide on summary. So at the end, I would be happy to take any questions on the plan. So the, the purpose of this master plan is to explore and enhance the social, economic, and environmental aspects of the waterfront, build on the work completed, of course, as part of this Harbor Secondary Plan. Uh, we consulted with the community and stakeholders on the type of improvements they would like to see and develop a roadmap for making improvements to Port Stanley's waterfront uh, to realize the community's vision. So this is a 10-year master plan. And so as we do with a lot of our master plans, we'd like to point out a few things about master plans just to keep in mind as I'm going through the presentation. So first, um, it is an important tool for budgeting purposes. So we have provided estimated costs and a schedule for implementation. Of course, that's in the report and I'll cover a bit of that tonight. Um, second, this plan must be viewed as a living document to be updated and adjusted through the annual budget planning process. Uh, third point, recommendations may be advanced, delayed, amended, uh, to respond to changing circumstances. So this plan does not need to be looked at like a fixed approach. Things will change and this plan will allow for recommendations and their sequence for implementation to be adjusted to address changing priorities or new opportunities as they may arise. Um, at some point, initiatives will require some additional community consultation to arrive at detailed plans and designs. So while we did do a fair amount of consultation as part of this plan, there is still more work to be done that needs to be, uh, you know, the community needs to be engaged um, as these recommendations are refined and implemented. And then finally, the last point there, council in consultation with municipal staff will determine if, when, and how initiatives are implemented. So because, um, just because this is something we're presenting is in the plan does not mean that things won't or can't change. And the fact that this is a 10 year plan that will spend multiple terms of council should not be considered an issue. So our approach uh, to developing this plan was very focused on engaging with council staff and the public throughout the process. And uh, on that slide, um, you can see these are the key points of, of meeting with uh, those groups. So we had interviews with council and staff in December. Uh, we had our first public information session you know, on January 20th. We then had survey one and feedback on Let's Talk Central Elgin, which closed on March 1st. We then presented design options for feedback and the feedback closed on March 28th. Uh, we then had a project update to council on March 11th, or sorry, April 11th. Public information session on May 12th. And then finally we had an online commenting and a priority survey, which closed on May 24th. 
So what we heard based on those engagement sessions, so we've summarized that into the following nine points. Um, and so these are really just the key points we heard. We got a lot of good feedback, of course. So first point being that available waterfront land is precious and should be used to support activities for all members of the public. Uh, second, we should provide a pedestrian focused waterfront. While at the same time, we need to provide adequate supply of parking or provide strategies to address parking. Uh, future mixed use development should front both the water, Lake and Creek and the street and uh, spaces should accommodate a wide range of all season activities. Uh, six point there, address climate change, rising lake levels. Um, we heard time and time again that a significant portion of the berm should be naturalized to enhance biodiversity. Um, number eight, we heard a lot about splash pad, dog off leash areas and sports courts. Um, and although they are quite desired in central Elgin, the majority of people felt that they should be accommodated elsewhere in the community. And then the last point, um, there is interest in exploring a marina facility or marine types of amenities. Um, this could be done in the future. So based on that community engagement um, that we conducted, our background studies, we did a number of site reviews, and of course our experience with other waterfront uh, communities in Ontario, we've identified 39 recommendations for the waterfront. And these are both physical infrastructure, construction projects, as well as plans and strategies to assist in realizing the community's vision for the waterfront. And we organize these 39 recommendations into five study areas. And they are the waterfront wide, we had eight recommendations, uh, West Harbor and Huffis Park, six recommendations. We also had six recommendations for Promenade West. And on the other side of the creek, Promenade East, we have five recommendations. And then finally, East Harbor or the berm, of course, as it's referred to, 14 recommendations. So the first eight recommendations, um, these apply across the entire waterfront. And these really lay the foundation for future waterfront improvements. And these are primarily designs, plans, and assessments and strategies. And for the most part, any costs for physical improvements um, that result from these recommendations are to be included in the capital project recommendations. So for example, one of the recommendations is a programmable lighting strategy. So depending on what comes out of that strategy, the cost for the actual lighting um, in, in a specific location like the berm would be included as part of the future berm construction. So as I said, there are eight waterfront wide recommendations. Uh, these include uh, first one programmable lighting, another study for signage and wayfinding strategy, public art strategy, um, building on the existing site furniture that's been done, so a uh, strategy there. Looking at break wall enhancements, uh, waterfront promenade, urban shoreline, I'll have some details on that one in a moment. And then we have a, a piece on potential future marina for, and considerations in regards to that. So I'm not gonna go through each recommendation in detail on, on any section, because there isn't enough time for that. And of course, it's detailed in the, the plan but I, I thought I'd highlight a few just of interest. So in, in this case, uh, urban shoreline, this is a strategy to address rising lake levels due to climate change while enhancing opportunities for public safety and improve access to the water um, for people to get closer to the shoreline. So we propose a number of different ways of doing this uh, based on the previous study that was done looking at uh, the, the rising lake levels. So on this slide here, the top image is showing uh, one option, which is um, having a lower and an upper promenade. Uh, the second the image below that is the tiered seating between upper and lower portions. Uh, the, the top image on this slide showing steps connecting the upper and lower walkways. And then the one at the bottom being large gradual steps to the water. So those are just four options. And the idea being that all four of those would probably be integrated in some way uh, across the waterfront along the, along the promenade. So, um, so that's where the study would look at where to, to implement those and more details on, on how that would work. There would also need to be periodic ramps between the upper and lower sections to ensure universal accessibility. Um, so that's uh, another detail that would, uh, that's provided. For the second area, we're looking at West Harbor and Hoffa's Park. And so we have six recommendations for this area. 
And this includes the McAshfield property, um, parking enhancement, uh, some improvements to Hoffa's Park, and boat launch enhancements. So the six recommendations are updating existing parking, uh, new public parking at the east end of the main beach, uh, new event space at Hoffa's Park, crosswalk and other pedestrian safety improvements at the boat launch, walkway enhancements along the west promenade adjacent to Kettle Creek, and future development as part of the harbor secondary plan area. For Promenade West, so this is the area north of Hoffa's Park and the boat launch, we have six recommendations. Um, so this extends from Bridge Street south to McAshville property along the west side of Kittle Creek. And these are primarily pedestrian and connect connectivity enhancements along with improvements uh, to the area adjacent to the Dominion of Canada building. So those six recommendations are waterfront gateway, enhanced existing promenade, a uh, new park, near the Dominion of Canada uh, building, extend the sidewalk um, in a couple of locations, um, and recommendations surrounding, again, the Dominion of Canada building and uh, recommendations regarding future development. Now on the east side of Kettle Creek, we have recommendations focused on pedestrian connectivity and enhancements. So we refer to this as Promenade East. These include um, some minor improvements to Glover Park, uh, some promenade enhancements, pedestrian connections, uh, separation between harbor activities in the promenade, and uh, recommendations regarding overtopping protection. And last but certainly not least, of course, is the uh, 14 recommendations for the uh, for the berm area. And uh, of course, this is the area that of the waterfront that piqued the most interest of the community and we've, we've got a lot of input on. So these recommendations focus on transforming the berm into a new waterfront park with the waterfront promenade, promenade around the perimeter. The east half of the proposed design focuses on naturalization with the west side being more of a traditional manicured park space. And then the south end of Main Street extension uh, is to be a plaza space providing civic space for events and gatherings. So to realize the berm area into a park, we provided 14 recommendations. These are organized by area or project. These include the waterfront promenade, walkways, trails, parking, uh, waterfront green on the, on the west side, naturalization on the east side, uh, shoreline naturalization, the waterfront plaza at the end of Main Street, uh, an amphitheater on top of a, of a berm, uh, an activity zone, uh, consists mainly of a, of a children's playground and, and uh, other amenities associated, associated with Little Beach, uh, lookouts, fishing platforms, exercise stations, and future development uh, recommendations. Now this cross-section illustrates the proposed shoreline naturalization approach with, uh, with a wetland feature along the, the east side of the berm. So we, we heard a lot about this from the community interest in having some naturalization in a wetland. So this cross section uh, shows uh, one possible way of doing that. So with those 39 recommendations, we, we had to come up with the implementation strategy to prioritize uh, when these, these would happen. So first thing we did is we developed a priority scoring matrix uh, to, to help establish a, a sequence. And we did this based on a set of criteria, which included um, uh, a range of factors uh, and we, we scored each one from zero, five or 10 to help do that initial uh, initial order. But that's not the only uh, factor that we use and that's just a, a way to help sort the long list. We also um, needed to look at operational versus capital projects. Um, we needed to prioritize recommendations that have some immediate need. Um, consideration for dependencies and efficiencies between recommendations. So we wanted to make sure that we have a logical order to implementation. You don't want to be building something or doing something before you've actually completed a study. Uh, of course, budget considerations to help balance spending across each year. Uh, we had to consider staff resources to, to implement and manage these projects. Um, and of course, the rollout does need still to be flexible and address new opportunities and priorities that may arise. So again, we, we provided a one possible scenario, but things uh, of course may change. 
So of course, each of the 39 recommendations were costed. Um, and these are high level estimates based on our, our understanding of the project scope at this time. So these are summarized in this table and organized by soft and hard costs. Um, soft costs being planning and design studies while the hard costs are physical construction or improvement. <laughs> Total estimated cost to implement this plan, we estimated it's approximately 33.5 million. And we've forecasted uh, for the first 10 years. So um, this table here shows years one to five and focuses on plans and strategies for the first couple of years, um, followed by implementation and phases of the waterfront promenade. Across the bottom of this slide, you can see um, the total estimated cost per year. And then this table is for years six to 10. And these improvements focus primarily on developing a berm into a waterfront park. Now the remaining, um, sorry, uh, now for the remaining uh, projects that aren't forecasted on years one to 10, um, there's approximately $10.5 million in, in, uh, in work to be done. And these are projects that we feel can likely wait until after 10 years. Um, and they, they don't, uh, they're not in immediate need. Um, some of these have to apply to um, areas that all the waterfront's already in an excellent condition. So there, there's not necessarily improvements that need to be done. Um, these recommendations also apply to the mixed use development areas that would be implemented as part of the secondary plan. And, uh, and also some of these would apply to addressing right raising or rising water levels um, as a result of climate change. But um, the feeling is that, that those don't need to be addressed in the next 10 years, but um, obviously need to be addressed uh, in the future. So in summary, um, this plan of course was developed with community input at every stage of the project. Um, we had 39 recommendations to implement it over 10 years uh, or 10 plus years. Total cost 33.5 million, which works out to about 2.9 million per year for the first 10 years. And again, more community engagement detailed design is required um, as per the implementation process to, to uh, confirm the scope and the, the costing of these recommendations. And finally, a council and consultation with municipal staff will determine if, when, and how initiatives are implemented. So thank you very much. And of course, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now. Okay, comments or questions from council? Go ahead, Councilor Kravitz. Um, I just wanted to thank you. I was, I was happy to see the final draft as presented. I think that's what is wanted by the area. So thank you very much for that. So. Yeah, I had a couple of questions, Michael. One was, I, I like your idea of the steps down to the water, except my concern is we get a lot of heavy storms. And I know with the pier or the breakwater to the lighthouse, we have to limit when people can be out there. And that's why we put the really safe walls along it, et cetera. So, I, I don't know what our liability would be if we put steps down to the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that was just something I know staff can be thinking about. That was one. The other one was, I know you have the naturalization being done, I think in year six. Um, and I all I'm thinking of is that trees and those sorts of things need quite a bit of time to develop. So I was thinking that as as many of the plantings as possible, we should do as soon as we can. And I know that there are groups like the eco class that are interested in helping with that and the Port Stanley Village Association. And there are groups probably um, that we could get grants, et cetera, to help with the naturalization. So I would like to see it move just a little further forward, but then that's not your concern anyway. <laughs> but um, I really like the trees in the parking lots. I, I was in New Zealand while in France, I saw a whole forest with parking lots in them, which was amazing. But in New Zealand, all their parking lots have borders of trees between the rows of cars. And it, it meant it was in the shade, it was very pleasant and they would plant flowers along there as well. So I was very pleased to see the natural uh, things that you were recommending for parking lots. 
So it's a great plan. I, I really do appreciate what you finally come up with. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yeah, just a quick comment. Uh, it just, it's hard not to get excited when you read it and start to think about the possibilities. So yeah, uh, excellent job. Councilor Rowe and then uh, Mr. Perrin. Thank you. Just feel like I need to say something too, just being from there. Um, yes, no, thank you very much for the plan. I think it's a very good roadmap for where we want to get to. It will take time and effort, obviously, and it's a big number, so it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but we, with this priority list and maybe some, a few tweaks, perhaps like the mayor suggests or, or something, um, hopefully we can make it work and we can find some funding from other governments, other sources to make this work sooner than later. So thank you. Mr. Perrin. Uh, through you, um, Madam Mayor, the, uh, as far as implementation goes, that is for a, a future uh, discussion uh, of council and staff. Yes. But uh, realizing that there is a desire to get the naturalization done, in all likelihood, that may have to come a little bit later because there's a number of hard surfaces that are going to have to be constructed prior to. And if we go in and naturalize ahead of time, uh, prior to those, uh, you know, promenades around the exterior of the of the headland or, or the berm area, then those will all be uh, compromised and destroyed. So there is going to have to be some work. Uh, prior to that naturalization in order to accommodate the hardscaping and, and the actual uh, walkways and things like that. Yes, and I, under, I understand that. I just thought year six seemed fair distance away, considering how old I am. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? If not, thank you very much, Michael. We very much appreciate that. And there is a motion. So would you read the motion, please? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Council Pro, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks, that the presentation of Think Design Report Stanley Waterfront Master Plan be received for information and that the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of Central Island adopt the June 2022 Port Stanley Waterfront Master Plan. Any questions or concerns? If not, would you call the vote, please? Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. And Mayor Mark? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. Now we're going to correspondence requiring action, and that's the vacancies on the BIA board. Uh, would you read the motion, please? Motion, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that report Port Stanley BIA Board of Management vacancies be received as information, and that Council approve the appointment of Ryan Featherstone and Nikki Simmons to fill the two existing vacancies on the Port Stanley BIA Board of Management, effective immediately, as recommended by the Port Stanley BIA Board of Management. Thank you. Call the vote, please. Council Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. And now we're going for the correspondence for information. There are three items there. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? I have received quite a few letters and requesting about the beach volleyball nets. Well, Deputy Mayor Marks? I've had seven or eight calls, text, emails, and the one of these I actually said we'll send a letter into council. So I even had a gentleman in small construction, well, construction company from the Belmont area said he, he'd put the post in free. I said, fine, but you know, I, that all has to be supervised by staff, but certainly seems to be a lot of interest. So that's what I told them. I just, if we get it here at the council table, see if there's any interest in reviving it or not. But it seems that when GT's made the decision to stop it, you know, people weren't thinking volleyball, but they are now as the warmer weather comes. So I'm glad we're here. So maybe we can discuss it. Jeff, do you have anything you'd like to say? Sorry, Mr. Brooks. Uh, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, I have nothing to add. Uh, as council is aware, staff table to report. Uh, about three weeks ago in regards to this topic here. Um, staff is happy to receive direction from council if council uh, wishes to reconsider. 
<clears throat> is there a desire for council to reconsider? I, I know Mr. Brooks had originally said that they would put in two if they, we wanted it, not the large number that GT's had, but two, and it was just, you know, first come, first serve. Bring, I would assume they'd have to bring their own beach volleyball. We'd provide the nets and the posts, but Deputy Mayor Marks. The, the majority of the ones that talked to me said if we could put the posts in, um, they'd do the rest. And they even suggested that they bring their own nets. Um, and that way they won't be vandalized, et cetera. So I'm, I'm certainly in favor of, you know, I'd reconsider it. A couple of posts I don't think would be too enormous task to do but uh i would certainly let want staff's suggestions where and how and all that stuff but i've heard from a lot of people that they want it. yes i have as well i've received a lot of emails and such that have said you know please we want them what is the rest of do you want to reconsider this obviously we'd need a two-thirds majority vote to reconsider it council row at two-thirds take into account how you voted the previous time? Yeah, if you, well, those who voted not to do it the previous time, two thirds of them would have to agree to have it Correct. brought forward, I believe. So I voted to do it. So I cannot be part of the two thirds that turned it down. Is that correct, Mr. Shipway? Through you, Madam Mayor, um, off the top of my head, I believe that was received for information, not necessarily a negative vote against against it okay so that we could reconsider it if we wish then yes that's my interpretation i'm just looking back at the minutes right now thank you mrs wilson's looking for the motion as well councillor fair thought a reconsideration only required more than 50 percent no it's two-thirds so i thought well maybe it is 50 now you're right it used to be two thirds. You're right. You Mrs. Mayor. Wilson. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wilson has the motion. Uh, Madam Mayor, through you and the rest of council, the motion on May the 9th was moved by Councillor Wynn, seconded by Councillor Kravitz, that report ICS 1222 Re Beach Volleyball Courts be received for information, and Councillor Rowe was a nay. Okay. So it was just received for information. Mr. Shipway, you had something you wanted to say. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I was just going to agree with Councillor Fair's interpretation of the reconsideration. Uh, I believe is correct. It was amended to the 50%, I'm fairly certain. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks, then. Due to the lobbying I've received, it sounds like you have, I'd, I'd be happy to move reconsideration. Um, well, it seems I don't think we even have to reconsider. I think we can and, just make it like they've, it was just filing for information. So we, we can make a motion to install to or whatever tonight, if that's what is is I'd fired. Support that. You do want to make a motion? I certainly would. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Shipway. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, if I may uh, respectfully make the recommendation, I, I think it would be prudent to basically uh, move what was recommended in Mr. Brooks's report previously. Um, there's a game plan for that, and it aligns with uh, the professional look that uh, Council is attempting to um, design and, and put in place at the beach. I, I think that would be the best way forward if Mr. Brooks would agree with that. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. I, I would agree. I would uh, recommend that uh, um, if, if council wishes to move forward, we install the nets as per the report that was taken to council a few weeks back. Could you remind us just exactly what that was, Mr. Brooks? So that uh, council report outlined uh, two volleyball courts um, with uh, steel posts and nets. And the approximate value uh, of the installation was $10,000. Okay, and if we find that the nets become vandalized a great deal, then maybe we could follow what Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor Marks said, that some of them are willing to supply their own nets. So if, we, if we'll put up nets, though, your recommendation initially is to put in the posts and the nets, too. Correct. And that location you would determine was whatever was the best location, or will that be in front of GTs? 
the general location will be approximately in the location of the old volleyball nets that were operated by GTs. Thank you. I'd be happy to make that a motion. Diane's trying to find the exact wording of the, what was in it. Just basically two steel posts, net, volleyball courts. Just give Diane a moment to find the exact wording. Okay, we'll carry on with, and then we'll come back to that one. Is yes. Okay. Are we content with that? Yes. Leaving it, and just we'll come back with that motion once Diane has had a chance to record it, but. So is there any other item under the correspondence for information that you wish to speak on? If not, you have a motion concerning correspondence, items one and two, I guess. So uh, the mover is Stephanie Mayor Marks and the seconder is Councilor Fair and I've re I have removed number three from the motion. So the motion reads, moved by Deputy Mayor Marks, seconded by Councilor Fair, that correspondence items number one and number two be received for information and filed. Call the vote. Councilor Rowe? Yes. Councilor Kravitz? Yes. Councilor Cook? Yes. Councilor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. So we can go on to the next part, can we? And Okay, and we'll let you continue to look. So we're moving on then to the Chief Administrative Officer's report on the Joint Compliance Audit Committee. Does anyone have any questions? This is an election item. Comes around every four years. No questions or concerns? We're not giving you much chance to write there, Mrs. Wilson. Go ahead and read the motion, please. The motion reads, moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that report CAO, CAO 2022, the Joint Compliance Audit Committee be received for information, and that staff be directed to bring forward a Joint Compliance Audit Committee bylaw for the 2022 municipal election in accordance with the Municipal Elections Act 1996, as amended for council consideration. You call the vote. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. Now we're going to the Director of Infrastructure and Community Services and looking at the blue box transition. So, uh, Mr. Brooks, do you want to have anything you want to add to your report? While we give Mrs. Wilson a chance to write the other motion? Uh, no, Madam Mayor, I have nothing nothing further to add. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions on this? Councillor Rowe. I do. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. So I was just wanting clarification on the July 15th, 2022 expectations for this. And I know I had emailed Mr. Brooks earlier today. So there, I guess I just feel like there might be a, a room for a 2022 update because there's some indication that in the AMO newsletters that municipalities are supposed to decide whether they're actually going to be a, a supplier of, of kind of like what we do today to the probes, even though we don't know yet which probe would be for Central Elgin. So just want to make sure we don't miss any deadlines is all. Mr. Brooks, do you uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, July 15th was the date that was indicated by RIPRA to, uh, for the municipality to respond back on which direction it wish, wishes to move forward with, whether uh, we continue on in-house or move to um, kind of give the keys to the uh, pro. Um, however, at this point, we don't know who the pro is. Uh, that won't be decided until after July 1st of 
this year. So once we do find out who the pro is and who we're negotiating with and uh, establish what the terms of the negotiation will be, we're not able to make a decision on what the future of the transition is going to look like between 2023 and 2026. So uh the purpose of this report is to provide uh the director of infrastructure and community services and the cao delegated authority to start uh that negotiation whenever that negotiation is ready to take place uh, at this point uh like i said we don't know who the pro is and we don't know who we're going to be negotiating with so um until that time we it, it, it's difficult for staff and council to make a decision on what the future is going to look like. Thank you, Mr. Sh or, uh, go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Sorry, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Marks. If memory serves me right, early on in the term, uh, some staff and counselors, we made the trip down on the train to a fairly large conference on this. I remember the, the speaker and the, the story then was that the, the announcement about the future blue box was imminent. Um, that's what two and a half years ago. It's got to be. It was early on in the term, wasn't it? Not? I think Mr. Perrin, you were there. Yeah. So it seems well, pandemic got in the way, but this hasn't been a rush project by any means. No, and I, I feel very strongly that we've got to continue with at least the weekly pickup, or we're going to end up seeing a whole lot of recycling going into our garbage. That concerns me a great deal. So whoever is going to be doing the pickup, I, I really want to see it continue. Because we, a lot of our people have, you know, have it for me. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Uh, I just wanted to add, uh, um, regardless of who is uh, performing the uh, collection of the blue boxes, uh, the same level of service has to continue through uh, till January first, twenty twenty six. That uh, January first, twenty twenty six, is a key date when the producers or the pros really um, take full control of the collection system. So between 2023 and 2026 is considered the transition period where they have to maintain the same level of service that Central Logan currently provides. After 2026, that level of service is open for change. Thank you. Hope it doesn't change. Go ahead, Councillor Rowe. Madam Mayor, I'm sorry, Mr. Brooks, I just... <laughs> I just keep looking at this newsletter and it says decisions are being requested from municipal governments as to whether they wish to provide blue box collection services or not by July 15th, 2022. So if we're saying that that date is flexible because we're not going to know who the pro is until July the 1st, that's okay. But what happens if that's not the case and we don't? declare one way or the other by July the 15th, what happens then? And, or does it even matter? I know I, I get that the level of service would need to be the same, but if it's a future uh, commitment, do we not truly need to decide by then? Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, staff would be hesitant to commit to something that we don't know what the parameters uh, of which this system would be. So we really need to know what exactly it is we're looking to get into an agreement with. We, we wanna take out as much risk moving forward as possible. So to for staff to recommend moving in one direction or the other at this point with the as little of information as we've been provided would be difficult. And uh, um, staff is working closely with RIPRA um, to ensure that all deadlines are met and that we don't miss the boat on um, any key decisions that are needed to be made. And I am assuming that you and Mr. Shipway together will make a decision before the 15th. Go ahead, Mr. Shipway. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just building on what Mr. Brooks said is that this process and transition to full producer responsibility has been widely criticized as like any of the other previous transitions in other jurisdictions. And the dates and requirements continue to change uh, on a weekly basis. Mr. Brooks and his team are absolutely on top of them. And uh, as staff, we commit that information would be before council in advance of timelines. However, what Mr. Brooks is saying is, is appropriate is in this situation where there's uh, such potentially large 
um, financial and service level impacts, it's important that we provide council with uh, as much information as possible before that decision is made, because it could have you know, decades worth of impacts on the municipality. So it continues to transition and I have full confidence in Mr. Brooks and his team is in meeting all the deadlines once we have that available information. Councillor Rowe. Thank you very much, Mr. Brooks and Mr. Shipway. I do have full confidence in, in you. I just needed to be able to be sure that we know exactly what the timeline is. And if it keeps moving, it keeps moving. But I, I totally understand and, and I, uh, I'm okay with delegating the two of you to be the spokesperson on our behalf. Councillor Fair. If, if we agree to go on and, and collect it, it would be a revenue generator for us at this point, uh, depending on what kind of a deal they made with us, but it, it has some potential to generate some decent revenue, does it not? Mr. Brooks? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Fair, I would suggest that it provides very little opportunity for additional revenue. Um, and in fact, if the municipality isn't careful on which direction that we do choose to move forward with, it could end up costing the municipality more money than it would, um, than we would ever have of generating revenue. Yeah, because at present we get paid for recycling materials. Uh, surely the problem, yeah, surely, go ahead, Councillor Fair. Well, well, then I agree, uh, continue cautiously, <laughs> see what, what we can do, but I, I was hoping it not a gold mine, but I thought it might be better. Uh, I guess I guess that's an unrealistic expectation. But anyway, so yeah, I, I agree with Councillor Rolla. Uh, uh, put it, keep it in your capable hands. Thank you. Would you like to read the motion for this specific one? Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Councillor Rowe. That report ICS 1522 Blue Box Transition and Negotiations with Producer Responsible organizations be received for information and that the director of infrastructure and community services and the CEO clerk be delegated authority to negotiate agreements with the producer responsible organizations for the municipality of Central Island to transition to the new blue box regulatory framework within the timelines identified in the Ontario blue box regulation or reg 39121 and that the director of infrastructure and community services and the CEO clerk report back to council on the status of negotiations with producer responsible organizations in the first half of 2023. Thank you. Would you call the vote, please? Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Previn? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. Do you have the other resolution ready? All right. So we'll give her a chance to read the other resolution that we discussed earlier. I do have. Deputy Mayor Marks as the member, and I'm not sure if second on that. Is there someone who'd like to second so, that motion? You want to hear the motion first? Do you want to hear the motion first, or do you want to second it, somebody? You want to hear it? I want to hear the motion first. Oh. You're looking for a seconder. Yeah, either, we're looking for a seconder. You can second it now, or you can hear the motion and then second. It's your preference to hear the motion? Yeah, I'm not seconding it. <laughs> okay, go ahead and read the motion. Draft motion reads that council approve the installation of two professional beach volleyball courts on Main Beach to be installed with aluminum posts and hardware and a net at an approximate cost of $9,642 exclusive of taxes. And further that the option contemplates the volleyball courts being open public use with no administration of a booking system for said volleyball nets. And I based that on that report that Mr. Brooks prepared, ICS 12-22. Thank you. So Deputy Mayor Marks has moved this. Is there a seconder? So, so I can? Yes, you can second. Anyone can, yep. Go ahead, Councillor Rowe, a second. Yep, so it's moved by Deputy Mayor Marks, second by Councillor Rowe. Deputy Mayor Marks. Just a quick question maybe to Mr. Brooks, if I could, you know, I, I guess I kind of winced a little at the $9,600, but you mentioned aluminum. I, I would expect the life expectancy of them would be uh, 
quite a long time, which would make me feel better if you'd agree with me. Yeah, yes, I would uh, I would agree. The aluminum poles, uh, we would expect a, a longer life out of and uh, uh, should be harder to vandalize. Um, so we would, uh, staff would recommend the, the aluminum posts if council chooses to go forward. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Marks. Just uh, pleased to hear that. And I look then at the, this as more of an, an investment rather, yeah, it's a, it is a significant cost. I recognize that, but I think it's something the public have been used to having. There is an expectation. I, so knowing that this will last a long time, I feel a little easier. So I still support it. Mr. Brooks, will those posts remain in place or do you have to remove them for the winter? My expectation is that they would stay in place year round. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Kravitz. Uh, my concern was, um, why are we deciding to put it in front of one business? Perhaps Matthews would like to set two and we could put two or three on Little Beach. I, I, I don't agree with the process on how this is being handled. We had discussed Maybe it shouldn't be in front of any business and just be between Mackey's and GT's. We had, we had discussion of this once before and it was determined that nobody was going to foster this program and run the volleyball match. I, I personally have not received one correspondence in regards to this. So that's why my question. I, I certainly have. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Marks. I'm only bringing this up in favor of this simply because the people have called and no one has said they want it on the beach. They haven't said where they want it. So if someone wanted to move it, you know, I'm not fussy where they put it. I'm just saying that seems to be a demand or a, a sincere wish that we put some um, posts back up. I'm not stuck up where it is. That, no, and we certainly couldn't put it in front of Mackey's because they own the beach in front of there anyway. Mr. Brooks, is would there be, would it be logical to put it between, you know, where not far from where the blue flag area is or? Uh, offhand, my recommendation would be to put them where they were pr prior, um, south of GTs. Any other questions or comments? If not, I'm going to ask Mrs. Wilson to call the vote, please. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Krevitz? No. Councillor Cook? No. Councillor Fair? No. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. That is Aye. a 3-3 three, three tie. Lost. And the question is lost. Thank you. So we're moving on now to uh, the uh, Director of Financial Services Treasurer's reports, the playground equipment for Union Street Park. Are there any questions on this one before we have the motion? If not, would you read the motion, please? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Deputy Mayor Marks, seconded by Council Fair, that report DFS 2122, we request for proposals 2022-15 design, supply, and installation of playground equipment, Union Street Park, we received this information. And that Council accept the proposal of Open Space Solutions, Inc. for 2022-15 design, supply, and installation of playground equipment for Union Street Park in the amount of $119,983 plus all applicable taxes. No questions? Would you call a vote then, please? Councillor Rowe. Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. And the next one on the fitness equipment. Next motion, Madam Mayor. Moved by Councillor Rowe, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks. Report DFS 2222. We request for proposals <coughs> 2214, supply and installation of outdoor fitness equipment at Union Street Park. We received his information and that Council accept the proposal of New World Park Solutions, Inc. For 2022-14 supply and installation of outdoor fitness equipment, Union Street Park, in the amount of $70,000 plus all 
plus all the applicable taxes. Would you call the vote? Councilor Rowe. Yes. Councilor Kravitz. Councilor Cook. Yes. Councilor Fair. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. Now we're coming to the, the third one is the annual municipal report highlights. Archana, is there anything you want to say about this before we uh, vote on it? I think we've all, I assume we've all read it. Um, I would welcome any questions if you have, and I can answer them. Okay. I thought it was very well done and it was very easy to to read and to see what was, uh, what the highlights were. So I, I appreciated it. Any other you. comments or questions? Councillor Rowe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just think it's a wonderful report and it's well overdue, I guess, but it really um, summarizes the year, I think, in a very good way and has a lot of good information in it. So I urge everybody to read it. <laughs> it's very good. Yes. Any other comments? If not, would you read the motion, please? Motion reads, Madam Mayor. Made by Councillor Fair, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that 2021 annual municipality report highlights be received for information. Call the vote, please. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. All right, now Director of Fire Rescue Service, Fire Chief, the monthly alarm activity report. Chief Ormrod is on the call. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> he never gets a chance to speak at these meetings. <laughs> no questions? Could you read the motion, please? Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councilor Rowe, that report FS0722, read monthly alarm activities report for May of 2022, be received for information. Call the vote, please. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. And now the uh, Director of Asset Management? Yes. I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Marks. Um, Madam Mayor, if I could, I um, wonder if we could ask the Fire Chief to. I understand on uh, Sunday previous, they had the Fireman's Breakfast in Belmont. And I heard they fed 950 people, did a very, very good job. It was a great breakfast. So maybe pass on congratulations. That's appropriate. A good time. <clears throat> Through you, Madam Mayor, to uh, Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes, the final numbers were over 900 uh, at 8.30 in the morning. I had heard they were lined up just about uh, down to Belmont Road waiting yep. for be fed so it was a an extremely good turnout and i think it just goes to show that a lot of people are glad that uh, we're moving a little bit past covid and can get out and support the community i fully expect a number of different events uh, that are scheduled to be overwhelmingly successful this year thank you thank you go ahead deputy mayor Marx. i have heard a rumor that uh, the fish fry may be back on for the port stanley once another is that a is that a, a factual rumor? <laughs> I have not heard officially. I have heard that there's some discussions going on about that. When I uh, get the official word, I will let council know. Thank you. Something to look forward to. Go ahead. Uh, you you read the motion? Uh, you read the motion then, please. Next motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks. That report AMDS 1522, May 2022 monthly building report, we received our information. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the building report? Not, call the vote, please. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. Now, the next one is. Uh, um, the um, bylaw report for all the different aspects of our bylaw enforcement. So do uh, you have any questions before I have her read the motion? Go ahead, Councillor Fair. I was just wondering about 
where it says other bylaws, it says there were four complaints, three are closed yet, there's two under investigation. That's one question. And the other, I just wonder what kind of things are those in that other bylaw complaints? Go ahead, Mr. Farron. Uh, it could be uh, zoning bylaw complaints. It could be um, noise bylaw complaints, uh, any of council's regulatory bylaws. For the two under investigation, was, I, I thought it was four in total. If you uh, refer to uh, the notes at the bottom, you'll note that uh, we tried to explain that. Maybe we didn't do a very good job at it, but under investigation and close, some carry over from one month to another. So uh, that's the reason that they don't add up. Okay, any other questions? If not, go ahead and read the motion. The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Ferris, second by Deputy Mayor Marks, that report AMDS 1622, May 2022 monthly bylaw report be received for information. Call the vote. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. The resolution carries. Thank you. Now we have the bylaws. Does anyone have any issue with any bylaws or are you okay with this taking them all together? Councillor Kravitz. I'd like number five, uh, both separately, please. I thought you would. Bylaw 2716. <laughs> yes. Bylaw 2716. Yes. yes. You want to take the others together first and then do that one? So I will remove 20, 2716. Okay. Motion, first motion reads, Madam Mayor. Moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Deputy Mayor Marks, that bylaws 2711, 2713, 2714, and 2715 be read a first and a second time. Call the vote. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martin? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Second one on those. Yep. Next motion on the bylaws, Madam Mayor. Moved by Councillor Rowe, seconded by Councillor Fair. Bylaws 2711, 2713, 2714, and 2715. We read a third time and finally passed. Thank you. Call the vote. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. And the resolution carries. Thank you. And now the other motion for. Do we need a mover and a seconder for bylaw 2716? <laughs> Councillor Fair, Councillor Kravitz. Motion reads, Madam Mayor. Moved by Councillor Fair, seconded by Councillor Kravitz, that bylaw 2716 be read a first and a second time. Thank you. Would you call the vote? Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? No. Councillor Cook? Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. And I will need a mover and a seconder. We need a mover and a seconder for the third reading. Deputy Mayor Marks. Councillor Rowe. Motion reads, Madam Mayor. Moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Rowe, that bylaw 2716 be read a third time and finally passed. Call the vote. I'm sorry. Oh, just to say, just um, want to make you know that the way oh, I'm voting no because I'm still not in full agreement with the two severances being taken off of one property. So just want that recorded. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and call the vote, please. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? No. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. And Mayor Martin? Yes. Resolution carries. 
Okay, and our public notice is just about the South Dell line and notice of our intention to adopt water and wastewater capital works um, with specific a specific connection rate bylaw. Any other new business? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Marks. I've had a number of calls, hurdles. Turtles trying to get from one side of the road to the other. Um, it, uh, it would, uh, I, I think it would be, uh, the way it's been explained to me, if we could assist with some signage. And this involves the County of Elgin roads and, and some Central Elgin roads. Um, I believe it was Colleen Burns who helps uh, a lot of the wildlife that are injured. She was the first to call me, and so just certain spots, if we put some signage up, maybe it'd be a reminder to people to kind of look out for them. Uh, I'm, I think it's fairly low cost, I'm assuming. There'd be a few posts and some signs made up. I don't know if we're too late for this year, but it's, it would be some similar to, I guess, to, like, to our deer crossing signs. So I, I'd be in favor. I'd like us maybe to investigate it. We'll have to bring it up with the Elton County Council and ask them to, you know, get on side with it, but I can't see any harm in it. So I thought I would, I promise I'd bring it up for discussion. It has been brought um, forward as well. And I recommended, and, and Mr. Shipway did, that it go to the Environment Committee so that they can then bring us back a recommendation. And Betsy McClure has already provided the Environment Committee with what the signs would look like. And okay. they will investigate various locations because I have several times over the years. Uh, um, Julie Berry has contacted me, the people uh, at the corner of um, Fairview and and uh, Fruit Ridge, that those are areas. And I've certainly seen it on Sparta Line in the Village of Union. I've seen lots of snapping turtles crying to cross the road there between um, the two ravines. Truman Line is. Yep. When it's time to lay eggs, they cross the roads. And it, you know, we we don't want to be endangering them. So it is going to the Environment Committee. That's on Friday, and they will be considering that and bringing back a recommendation to our next meeting. Any other new business? If not, then a motion to move into close, please. Motion moves by the mayor, moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Fair, that Council proceed into closed session at 8.02 p.m. in order to address a matter pertaining to a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality of Oregon. Thank you. Call the vote. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks? Yes. Mayor Martin? Yes. Carries? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we'll give Mr. Perrin a chance to take us offline and this is Wilson and yeah. are we live? Yep. All right, thank you. We are back in open session now. Um, would you read the motion? Is there anything from the a motion from the closed session item? The motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councillor Fair, second by Councillor Rowe, that confidential item C and C be received as information and that staff proceed as directed by Council. Thank you. Call the vote. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Mark? Yes. Mayor Mark? Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. And the uh, confirmatory bylaw motion. Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Deputy Mayor Mark, seconded by Councillor Fair, that bylaw 2712 be read a first and a second time. Call the vote. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. Deputy Mayor Mark? Yes. Yes. Resolution carries. And the final one on that motion. Motion by moved up. by Councillor Rowe, seconded by Councillor Fair, that bylaw 27, 2712. We read a third time and finally passed. Roll the vote, please. Councillor Rowe? Yes. Councillor Kravitz? Yes. Councillor Cook? Yes. Councillor Fair? Yes. 
Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. And our final motion. Motion reads, Madam Mayor, moved by Councilor Fair, second by Deputy Mayor Marks, that the regular meeting of Council dated Monday, June the 13th, 2022, be adjourned at 10 p.m. and the next regular meeting of Council be scheduled for Monday, June the 27th, 2022, at 7 p.m. Call the vote, please. Councilor Rowe. Yes. Councilor Kravitz. Yes. Councilor Cook. Yes. Councilor Fair. Yes. Deputy Mayor Marks. Yes. And Mayor Martin. Yes. Resolution carries. Thank you. It was a brief, quick meeting, but it was, I think, seeing the Harbor Master Plan was exciting. So thank you, everyone.